Okay. Hello and welcome everyone to Twin Flames, the Great Spiritual Awakening podcast, where every week you can hear real life stories from people who have answered the call of divine love. My name is Dennis. I'm a certified ascension coach with Twin Flames Universe and your host. And I've been on my Twin Flame journey for a couple of years now. And with the teachings of union, I found my true twin flame and I'm living in union with her now. And for our episode today, I'm very happy to have you with me, Twin Flames in Union, Christine and Panos. I hope I said your name right. Yeah, yeah, you did. Good. So hello, guys. How, how are you doing today? Oh, excellent. Hello. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to interviewing you because, you know, so far for this podcast, we've only really had couples that where the Twin Flames found each other within the Twin Flames Universe community or where they have come together mm. before finding this twin, uh, the twin Flames Universe. And then they kind of came into the community together and started applying the teaching together. And you guys are like the first couple that I get to interview where you had this dynamic kind of where Christine came into the community first started doing the work and then attracted you Panos and you guys came into mm -hmm. it. so I'm I'm really curious to hear how also your perspective Panos was to have like your twin flame be involved in this teaching and really do the work and how you felt that and also what your your experience of the twin flame journey was like being kind of you know with I don't want to say like you being on the outside, but you just having a different experience of it than starting from the beginning with the teaching. So my very first question to you is, um, I would like to hear from you, Christine, how, how did you first begin your Twin Flame journey and how did you come to find Jeff and Shalia? Yeah, so I've always been a very spiritual person since a very young age. I was very intuitive. So it felt like the next step for me to enter my twin flame journey when I was around like it started when I was about 18 17 that age but it wasn't very conscious and I think it was around 2016 or 2015 like towards the end of that year where I first started googling about twin flames and what twin flames are and eventually I found Jeff and Shalia on YouTube and I could feel that what they were sharing was true in my heart. It felt very different to everything else I had heard about the journey in Twin Flames. And I actually had a lot of misconceptions about what Twin Flames are and how they work before I came to this community. So yeah, it was pretty straightforward. I found them and then I felt called to join the community and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. And at that time, did you guys know each other already? How did you meet for the first time? Mm. Um, would you like to say or? Okay. okay. So we met, I think in 2016, was it? I think it was Yeah, and it was 2016, yes. Yeah, and um, I had just been fired from a job I had and I really wanted a change of scenery. So I was like, okay, I'm going to visit my friend who was like a flight away. So I did that and Panos was a friend of that friend. And it was, I think, on my first night staying over at my friend's house, uh, we decided that we were going to play Dungeons and Dragons with his group because I really like that. And yeah, Panos was in that group and that's how we met. Panos, do you want to add something to this? I feel yeah, <laughs> it was, as, I see, as Christine said, it was a really quite a while before we got together officially, like four, five years. Oh. Four. It, we knew each other for quite a long time. And after that initial meeting, we began in 2018 talking more regularly together. Mm. We didn't speak and until then, pretty much. We, we had a bit of some meetings here and there, one month per week, per year, not much, not often. And then it became more regularly, first on a weekly, then on a daily basis. Mm. And then it escalated from there. <laughs> it escalated. <laughs> That's a nice word. <laughs> It's funny, but I, I get what you mean. At that time, Christine, when you guys started talking a lot together, were you already 
like were you already doing the mirror exercise and in the Twin Times Universe community or was that before? Uh, when we started talking regularly, I was already doing the mirror exercise. I already had a life purpose class. I think mm -hmm. I got paid off later. Don't let me say I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I was already doing the work quite a bit and I was actually with my false twin flame when that happened. So I was not aware at all that Panos was twin flame. Gotcha. Panos, go ahead. <laughs> I don't have that much to add here, to be completely honest. Uh, I knew she had a relationship when we first started meeting more regularly, and she spent quite a longer time talking with us than her uh, friend, which was a bit strange to say. But other than that, I didn't know much about in flames back then. Mm, so. Yeah, I remember at that time um, I was on a call and it was like a group called the entire friend group because it wasn't just the two of us. And I remember Panos was saying something and I remember thinking, wow, I wish my twin flame were, were as cool as Panos is. His twin flame must be lucky. <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. <laughs> So when you guys first met, none of you had any idea of, like, did you feel something special or was it just like, that's a cool person, I like them and that's kind of about it? Nope, it was, that's a cool person, I like him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, I would, I would second that. I see. And then, you know, Christine, you, you mentioned you had a false twin flame experience and that's also what, like, with this person, that's who you, when you began, like, when you entered the community, that's the person you thought is your twin flame. So how, what would you say did you do to transcend your false twin flame and, well, attract union with your true twin flame? So... As always, I did like a mirror exercise and I had um, weekly coaching at the time, which I still do. And it was very supportive and I kept feeling all those things, like huge breakthroughs in my life purpose. In every area of my life, I was attracting new friends. I was having a better relationship with my family. Everything was transforming, but the relationship with that person was staying the same. And at some point I was starting to wonder like, do I have so much trauma here that my twin flame is not reflecting those things to me? What's going on? And eventually I also got very clear on what my values are and really getting to know myself better without attaching to a specific person because I feel a big mistake uh, a lot of us make when we're on the twin flame journey and we are thinking of a specific person as our twin flame is that we attach to that person. So we look at them to see what qualities we really desire, but we don't ask ourselves what we desire. So there's attachment to the person. And as soon as I release the attachment to the person, I remember I was doing the meditation exercise from Stephen Shalia's book, in which you call your twin flame to come and sit next to you. And I was shocked because the energy felt so different to the person I thought mm. was my twin flame at the time. Interesting. So that freaked me out a bit. <laughs> oh, and yeah, that's when I started realizing that, yeah, maybe that's not the one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then what, what followed after that? You released that person? Yeah, uh, I think it was the same day. I had a session with my coach who helped me see the truth here. Like there was no mass in my heart with this person. And I remember the same day, I just went on a brick call with my friends. And it's so funny because Panos was also there. I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to break up with my boyfriend tonight. Wish me luck. <laughs> just went and broke up with him because I was sure, like, that's not my twin flame. I can't hold him back from pursuing his twin flame if he wants that. And I can't hold myself back. It's not compassionate or loving to that person. So, yeah, that's what I did. And for a while, I was sure that I was going to spend a few years, like, maybe doing inner work and just being me and God. And I definitely didn't expect that my twin flame had been there all along. Mm. Gotcha. And Panos, for you, while Christine was going through her false twin flame experience, what, what was going on in your life? That period, to be completely honest, not much. I was at university studying when mm. Christine was in her 
all the her first in flame experience and we were we were then back then it was the beginning of the stage where we were starting to talk more regularly to a weekly and the, the daily basis as i said and she didn't mention him very often her first in flame and until one day she just said well we, we broke up violently like it, that was that we didn't know much about it and to be completely honest we didn't thought from the initial okay what happened initial that friends do we didn't explore that that much it was like okay her decision mm-hmm. yeah nobody asked me why or whatever it was like yeah that's it that happened mm. gotcha and then how did you Like for you, Christine, when was the first time that you started to feel that Panos might be your twin flame? So I can't remember exactly. It had been a while after my breakup, I think a few months uh, until I was ready to explore anything else because I was still healing what that relationship was about because it had been like two, three years. So it was... A big part of my life where I had been with that person so I had to heal a lot of those things that came up and really ground that decision and eventually it just God started, started showing me the signs that hey maybe you should explore this person over here <laughs> and I was so resistant to that first I was like no no way I'm not doing that <laughs> and then what happened after that <laughs> hmm. After that, I kept doing minor work because I didn't feel ready to actually take any action in the 3D on a physical level, like to actually talk to him as more than friends or anything like that. So I focused on that because like the priority on this journey being with God and then everything else can just flow naturally. Mm-hmm. And I remember that he did it flow naturally. The way I spoke to him started being a little bit more like playful mm-hmm. <laughs> and he thought I was joking. Whenever I made a party comment, it was so funny. Ah. And, <laughs> and then I went through a map, and that was when we got together, actually. I think it was the same, no, the next day after mm-hmm. I went through it. Yeah. Wow. So you basically had a map session, and the day after you got together with. Yeah. That's like kind of going from zero to a hundred in a day. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the perfect description for my twin flame journey. It's like a zero to a hundred. And when, when you guys got together, like in your heart, you, were you like sure that he was your twin flame or were you still kind of like, okay, I'm going to explore with this person and this is what feels good right now? Like what, where, where were you at when you, when you came together? Um, personally, I was not as attached. I was like, okay, God is calling me to this person right now. And if it's a false twin flame again, that's fine. I trust God. And if it's my true twin flame, then even better. <laughs> But I wasn't attached to it. And I was willing to go into it with um, my eyes open instead of just, oh, we're here. That's it. You know, I was willing to really explore that and see the truth of the connection instead of trying to sugarcoat it for myself like I did with my false twin flame. I see. And then I guess this is kind of what gets interesting. So when did you when did you then bring up twin flames for the first time? And talk I think with- I like say that. <laughs> mm, if I remember well, it was a couple of months after we made up. It was if I remember well we it was August and you brought it up October. in October. In October. Yes. And initially, it was a foreign concept to me. She explained in briefly what twin flames are and the whole process behind it and the meanings that go with it. I was interested at first. It seemed nice or something as was nice to believe in initially, though I didn't know much about it at the time. And I, through the years we've been together, I've been seeing some of the lessons uh, together and some of the teachings. Uh, when we can, when we have a few extra hours to spare, we can put up a, 
Like, if I remember well, we've seen the whole of Pin Flame Ascension or something. Was that your classes? Yeah, yes. the classes. That's kind of cool. Yeah, not everything yet, but <laughs> we're okay. getting there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, I can see it has grown on me through the years. Mm. And, mm, I believe it's, I have a better grasp of it right now than I did have back then. I see. So when Christine first brought it up for you, it was like a, okay, this is nice. Like, like did you did you like you know when she brought it up had like this initial reaction of like okay yeah i can see that you're my twin flame that makes sense she, she didn't do that initially she didn't just go straight to the point that you're my twin flame she brought it more slowly yeah, to right. say are uh, those like, what are you think twin, of that? yeah what uh, are twin flames the special connections and then like Mm -hmm. A year, a year late, no, half a year later, somewhere about many months later, she brought up that I believe you are my twin flame. So I can understand more completely what a twin flame is instead of just for throwing a foreign concept. And I'm still like, okay, what is this? No, I don't know it. I cannot answer that mm -hmm. with uh, knowing, without knowing what it is. And yeah. So, so they know she was more open to it at first than I was because I still had the resistance of my first employment when if that's not the one <laughs> but I feel he was more open to it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, you know this like the situation kind of where like one person is like you know aware of twin flames and in the twin flames universe community really actively on a twin flame journey and they're like in the situation where they have to tell their potential twin flame hey I believe we're twin flames and you, you guys seem to, you know, have, have done that in a very, you know, in a way that really worked for you. So I'm wondering if you have any, like, advice from both sides to any person who has to, like, tell the twin flames that, the, the twin flame that they think this person is a twin flame. From my side, I would say to any person that is thinking of telling their twin flames that they're twin flames to... Just be aware of what their relationship is like and bring it up in such a way that your twin flame will understand it, like meet them where they live. So in my case, uh, my twin flame wasn't um, into spirituality, so he wasn't super familiar with all that. So I couldn't go straight for the woo, -woo part, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean? So I went for the more logical part, the more like worldly part of it. Like, oh, they're perfect compliments. And it's like... Um, perfect partners and the core values match up perfectly and like they have this harmony in the relationship so this was something that he could easily understand based on his own experiences mm -hmm. instead of explaining something that he wouldn't get because um, he never had an experience with spirituality before so basically really meeting your twin flame where they're at where they are exactly mm. that's really powerful Panos, is this something from your side that you would say, like, I guess was it also important for you with how Christine approached it, that you would say that's what mm. she did really well? Yeah. I mean, of course, I would say to be more open-minded when somebody approaches you with an issue you're not familiar with. Just don't reject it immediately just because you don't know it or if, then, if you don't want to know it. Because I know many people that aren't familiar with foreign things, things they don't know. And spirituality is something that is foreign to a lot of people. And most people actually would just reject it without having a second thought about it. Mm. So I would say that even though it's something foreign to you, it's worth the second thought and a seeing further inside to what this is and understanding a bit closer to what it represents and what it means at a deeper level. Mm. And you don't need to do it immediately. You can take your time with it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's like pressuring you to learn it in a certain time at your own pace when it interests you. Mm. I love that. Mm -hmm. So are you like, what's your, like, because you guys you have been together for a couple of years now, right? So Panos, for you, what has have you become like spiritual what's your relationship with spirituality at this point having been together with christine and 
like on a swim from journey? Before we met, I didn't know anything about spirituality. I've never been, I've never been in any contact with anyone that was spiritual. So I had no idea to be, uh, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And when we met Christine and as time passed and she brought it up more and more and I took an interest to it. And through time I can say I have, um, I can claim I know much about this, I'm still rather new to it, but I can say I know more than uh, when we first met, mm -hmm. definitely. And I can say that, well, it's a learning experience and as time passes I can say that well, I know even more. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed that is very cool about him is that um, he never had the, um, much of an experience with being spiritual and everything, but he's really good with tarot cards. Ah. It's also really cool to see. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he's better than me sometimes. <laughs> wow. That's funny. So, um... Panos, for you, when, you know, Christine brought up the whole Twin Flame topic, and then I assume Christine also started talking about Twin Flames Universe and Jeff and Shalia and the teaching of Union. What was your reaction to that, Panos? Was that, like, in the beginning, something that was, like, weird to you, or you were kind of like, what are you doing over there? Or what was that like for you to get introduced to the community, basically? Well, as I said, the... Uh, she introduced me rather nicely, which it, I she took her time and I took my time to see it step by step and well, one step led to another, based the, the meanings, uh, the whole process, and then the community, like uh, the community step by step, and then the members, Jeff and Sally eventually, the classes. So it didn't feel to me that I was overloaded or had too much information to process. I had this for now, I processed it, we continue. Mm. So when I got invited to the open forum and such, and I, I saw what's happening there and saw the community with my own eyes and so how they interacted, it was a more natural experience than just being forced somewhere which we don't know nothing about. So it was nice, I can say. Yes somebody who isn't very spiritual to be introduced in such a community. Mm. Beautiful. What I hear from that is like, it sounds like, you know, Christine, you, cause like some, I know some people like when it comes to this twin flame journey, like, and especially, you know, when you know about twin flames and again, your twin flame is not in a knowing as much as you, like you, it's, it's sometimes hard to not get into this tendency of trying to push the truth onto your twin flame or try to, kind of control them or make them hey you know like come and do the same thing as me and it sounds like you really you guys really did that very well to like from your side Christina you were very surrendered and you just introduced him slowly step by step in his own time and you part not had like the space to kind of explore it in your own time and in the way, a way that felt good to you. Thank you. Yeah. And I feel like I was asking for guidance from God like every day when it came to that, because obviously that's an important part of my life. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted him to be part of it. But at the same time, I also wanted to respect him and not to just push him or annoy him or get him to do something just to make me happy because it's not mm -hmm. how it works. And it's not really respecting the relationship between twin flames to do that thing. Mm -hmm. So I know what you're describing, like I really felt at first like, oh, I should introduce them to everything, but then it's like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> so how did you know at any given point what the right thing was to say and how much was like kind of appropriate for your union and where your relationship was at to, to talk about it, bring up? Mm -hmm. I always stick in with my heart and um, ask God. So I would be like, okay, I want to express this to him. Am I doing it from a place of wanting to get something from him? Am I doing this to get a reaction or to get attention, to get love even? Because that's how we're socialized growing up in relationships. Like you're supposed to do things to get the reaction mm -hmm. from someone. Or am I doing this because I'm sharing love and truth with him? And I really don't know what that's to the outcome. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I see. And for you, Panos, from the moment that Christine started like um, applying the work, as you mentioned, Christine, you went through the mind alignment process, you feel trauma, you've been doing this work for a couple of years now, um, and you've been very dedicated in doing that. Panos, did you notice something like shifting in how you feel or your life or anything from the moment that Christine started applying this, you know, working, doing her inner work? Hmm. If I remember when Christine started back in 2017, yeah. that was quite a rough period for me because we had family issues, quite serious, mm. uh, and it involved surgeries and hospital. So it wasn't very pleasant to say the least. And I can say that as far as I remember, it was, I remember, yeah, I remember needing help, a lot of help at that period to get through something like that. And I really want to believe that Christine's uh, lessons through Spinning Flames helped me go through that troubled period in my life. And I would say that was the most, uh, the best example I can give at this point. Or, Mm -hmm. something that without knowing here that would have affected me. Mm -hmm. I see. I find that always, oh, go ahead, Christine. No, I was just saying that very sweet. <laughs> I think the same, that um, mm -hmm. minor work helped him even though we weren't really in contact at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's just something I find always really fascinating because I notice like when, for example, my twin film is healing something, I, I notice that instantly. And it's kind of like when you, because you guys, you, you're you both in Greece, but you're not like living mm. together. So it's kind of like mm. over distance. Sometimes that's like, I would not have noticed in the past, but then like when you live together, it's kind of like you notice when the other one is doing something and you're like, I'm feeling something on my twin film over there is doing something. So it's, yeah, just interesting to see from your perspective to how you, you were going through the same lesson, like the overall overarching lesson at a given time. And what you were doing, Christine affected Panos and helped him to move through his things. And vice versa, probably. Mm -hmm. Likely. So at this point, I, I actually want to bring up a belief that a lot of people have on the twin film journey. And it's kind of this, it's this belief that I'm doing all of the work and my twin film is just sitting over there and enjoying the life and not doing anything. Do you find there to be any truth in that? What is your perspective on this? Personally, if you would look at us from the outside, you would see me doing all the work, mm -hmm. as people would say. But I feel like I'm enjoying life way more because of that. Because imagine going through something very upsetting and not knowing how to resolve that. That, mm -hmm. that sucks. Nobody wants to go through that. But now I have this confidence that whatever it is, I know how to work through my feelings. I know the real meaning of the challenges that I'm facing. It's because there's a block here and it means that it needs to be overcome. It doesn't need to stop me. So I feel like it's a gift instead of, oh, I'm doing all this heavy work. You know, like it's not um, work in the sense where it's this draining thing. Mm -hmm. It's working on yourself. It gives to you. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Mm, I would say, like, as with every healthy relation there is, it's, it's a give and take. You mm -hmm. don't only just take or we don't only just give. Each one has to do their part in a relationship, so the other one doesn't feel neglected or feels like it's going over the top. And you may want to make it nice for your significant other, always. So caring about them and showing every day that you do stuff not because you have to do stuff but because you care about the person next to you and you want to help them their life move on being that spiritual in more common senses in everyday activities always i think it helps in making sure the relationship is better and it's more healthy and, and mm -hmm. okay. And I would like to add that I feel like a lot of this misconception comes from uh, judging things from the outside. Mm -hmm. 
like, um, oh, I'm doing all the inner work because I'm doing the mirror exercise, for example, or because I'm meditating 10 hours a day. It doesn't really work that way. And I remember the first time Panish and I got like this big upset with each other because we really triggered each other that one day. Um, it looked very different how we worked through our feelings. Mm. And for me, I just went and did the mirror exercise. I meditated, I prayed. And in his case, uh, he did it through video games. That's how I noticed he processed his feelings. And that's one way to do inner work also. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not conscious maybe, or like that's his process. And it's not up to me to judge it. It's between him and God. Like my own process is between me and God. Mm -hmm. But then the result was we were both very peaceful about it and it was healed. Mm. I really love that. It's so powerful because, you know, what you mentioned, it's really so important to not judge things by how they look. And I, I found that sometimes too, like, you know, even with, like with me and my twin friend, like we both do the mirror exercise, we're both in the community, but even with that, we're still working through things in such a different way. And I found that that's something that I've had to work through at times as well, that I'm judging how she's doing it because I'm doing it so differently. And you're just talking about this, how you're basically in your own way doing the same thing, but it just looks different. I think that's that's just a very yeah powerful insight. So connected with this, um, I want to bring up a different like misaligned belief that is floating around when it comes to the twin flame journey. And it's this whole concept of this one awakened twin flame and another unawakened twin flame. Oh, Christine. Um, was I on that pros? <laughs> I think yes, it was uh, for a second. Um, could you repeat that? Yeah. yeah, I just repeat. Um, so another concept, misaligned concept that is floating around when it comes to twin flames is this concept of this one awakened twin flame and one unawakened twin flame. And again, just judging from the outside, it would look like, you know, you, Christina, the awakened twin flame that is on the path and Panos is over there and you need to awaken him because he doesn't know what's going on. Um, and I don't mean any of this, you know, in, in mm. a bad way, you know, just kind of like, yeah. that's like the belief that people have when it comes to the twin film. So I want to address this with you to shine light on it, that that's actually not the case. But yeah, I would like to hear you, your opinion on, on that. It's really funny that you bring this up because I remember one day I was calling him about something and I was like, you're not the awakened twin flame. <laughs> and it was so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like it's connected to not judging what things look like on the outside because every person is very different, even in a twin flame union. And a good example of this would be, for example, when we are going on a drive and I have the driver's license, I drive the car, but he's the one that gives the instructions and he's very good at it. He's very good at remembering what road we can go through, optimizing the route. So it might seem like I'm the, I don't know, the one that has like the more adulting part, right? <laughs> but he's supporting me in that. It's like, um, Jeff and Shalia describe it, like the two wings in one bird. Mm -hmm. We are much more optimal together and it's not one of us being more awakened or not and like maybe in some cases like one of us will be more advanced in one area and the other is advanced in another but that's fine because we don't need to be to have like perfectly matching skill sets that's not very optimal for our union or our life purpose mm -hmm. how do you feel about this whole awakened unawakened twin flame concept mm -hmm. not? well as you said i don't know that much about spirituality but i can understand that arrogance and spirituality don't mix so so that concept being like that and it just feels out of place in mm -hmm. such a world of the world of spirituality so i i'm pretty sure that when you have a stance like that you're missing the point of being a person that is spiritual. It's not about proving yourself higher than the others, it's just elevating everyone around you. So I just think it's a wrong point of view to have. Mm -hmm. That was so perfect. You, you actually yeah. like 
bam, your response. <laughs> he says he isn't spiritual, but he is. <laughs> yes, I was just, I was just thinking like this guy is definitely spiritual. He just doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I really love that like, because you have such a down-to-earth approach. And I, I feel like sometimes when we come from like this really woo-woo spirituality, like we have to say, like, like we tend to go more into the woo-woo, like, hi, I don't know what spirituality kind of thing. And you're like saying the same stuff, but in a very down-to-earth, grounded, normal, everyday way. So that's really cool. Just wanted to mention this. Yeah, sometimes we'll be talking about something more philosophical or spiritual and he'll say something and I'll be like, what? <laughs> I'll be so impressed by how he expresses himself. It's really nice to see. Mm. Oh, I, I had a question and now it just disappeared. What did I want to ask? No, actually it just disappeared, but I'm going to ask something different. I'm curious how... What are you guys doing when it comes to your life purpose and how is how have you found that that's complementary? That's something uh, Panos is still exploring, so I'll let him handle that part for himself. But for me, my life purpose uh, is to be uh, an ascension coach, like I'm helping him friends coming in, which feels very good. I just, yeah, that's what's needed on the planet right now, divine love. That's like the top thing that we need. And then everything else can be built from that. Um, I've also noticed that uh, a big part of my life purpose has to do with gaming. And I'm not sure how to describe it exactly. It's the use of my creative energy because I've noticed I'm a very creative person, specifically in the areas of design and writing. Mm -hmm. And I really like to express that in a way that is fun. Mm -hmm. So I've noticed those things very much about my life purpose. And actually gaming is somewhere where we both met. And it's pretty much where we met. So of course we met there. And yeah, it's really cool to explore your life purpose because that's, from my experience, a lot of people make their complaints through that instead of anywhere else. Because you're really aligning with your soul design and that's what attracts you to inflame. Mm. What are you doing at the moment, Panos, when it comes to your life purpose? Uh, as Christine said, I'm not quite sure uh, what I want to do, definitely. I have, all, of course, some ideas of what I want to do permanently when I get something more stable than what I'm doing right now. And I would like to point out that I believe that's not that bad. Life is complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, I would like one day maybe to work on programming as an engineer more permanently and see where that leads. Of mm -hmm. course, I still have some obligations I have to do in front of me. But yes, I'm not quite sure on what I want to do. Mm -hmm. This is fine too. It's part of the journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not very often talked about. People are always like, um, yeah, I figured it out. Here it is. But a lot of us we're still in the exploring process, and that's okay. Yep, no, absolutely. And life purpose is really a huge part of this journey. Because like your twin flame union has a purpose, and you're not just coming together to just party and drink tea, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> but you you know, you you're coming together for purpose, and that's actually when it gets really like fun and cool when you start to to work together. So I'm looking forward to, you know, like for the future to see where you guys are, are going and where you're going to like bring your life purposes together and all of that. Because I also know both of you are like, you, you go into like the, how, how can we call it? Like the nerdy realm of like games and all of that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's something that connects you deeply and also how you met. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how, is, is that something that, yeah, I guess like your general question, like something when it comes to games and all of that, that you see yourself in some capacity or way doing together in the future? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like part of my perfect gaming group in my love list. <laughs> I've written that down <laughs> because it's always so fun to play with him. 
like playing with other people has been fun also, but it's not quite the same because your friend claim is with professionals and compliments. So mm -hmm. it's a whole different energy. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about that a bit more? How, what's that like playing with your twin fan? Hmm. So my experience has been very much fun and it's very effortless. It's something very natural. So yeah, something really cool. And we're also able to like very much partner with that whenever it comes to it, like maybe strategy or things like that. So. Is that something that you guys have like, I mean, for both of you in your own ways used to work through like upsets or work on your relationship, like playing video games or playing games together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I mean, uh, gaming brings up a lot of upsets <laughs> sometimes, but yeah. I, don't think, I don't think gaming really does much to combat it. It's one way to just uh, let things move a bit as friends, but I feel a more direct approach of talking with somebody and explaining how he feels, how I feel, how we, how we both, our point of view of the subject that got us into this upset and understanding each other's uh, opinions and logic on the subject does more than that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when everything is resolved, well, blowing some steam off per se or whatever activities you enjoy always helps. Mm -hmm. The same thing in spiritual language would basically be playing video games when you're upheaving is helpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe so, yes. <laughs> Just for, for the woo people that are listening to this. Mm. Um, where are you guys actually at when it comes to moving in together because I know Christine you I've you've made a post about that at one point and I've heard you talk about that and I'm just curious to Panos is kind of like what is what is he talking about but <laughs> yeah is that something that you guys uh want to do feel that you want to do it sooner where are you at with that I know he reads my post in the open forum anyway so <laughs> Yeah, um, it's something we're still healing because we want to be very grounded when it comes to decisions like that. It's not something you just want to go one day and say, hey, here I am, you know, so. <laughs> so, yeah, that's something we're still healing and grounding in. And of course, we're also getting clear on where we want to live, how we want our house to be, how we want our life to be there. So it's a process. Mm -hmm. And of course, with any spiritual process, that could come up, blocks come up, and that's something we're also healing. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I feel like Panos wants to say something. <laughs> well, I believe so that staying together permanently is one of the biggest steps Team Flames can do because it really helps being in the same area, in the same house. Mm -hmm. For the rest of your life, it's really something that's very important. Well, of course, you can make a long distance relationships work, but to finalize it and make it perfect, you have to be together. Mm -hmm. And it's such a step, a big step, but you need to take care of it, not to rush it, not to just make it of secondary importance just because you want it. It's something you must give a lot of emphasis on mm -hmm. to just make it perfect because much we rely on it on later steps. And it's one of the biggest foundations you can have in a relationship and you want to make your foundation strong. Mm, gotcha. So you're both basically working on your foundation and towards finding a perfect place to move in together at the moment. Mm. Pretty much. Okay. Yes. And you, you two, how, how far away are you from each other at the moment? An hour by plane, not that much. Yes. Okay. It's and manageable. Yeah. So, do you usually fly to each other, or how do you? Oh, okay. Yeah, flying is the only option because both because I'm living in an island and taking a ship takes a bit too long. It's one day. Four hours. Go, yes, one day. Wow. It's more practical to take an airplane. Yeah. I so, love planes anyway. Mm, that's really cool living on an island. I want to live on an island. 
um so how how has it been like for you to have a long distance relationship and what are some key pieces of advice that you would give other people when it comes to maintaining a long distance relationship well it's not been that weird because even with my false twin flame even even though he lived way closer uh we still had a long distance relationship so it's something i'm kind of used to anyway so it wasn't a huge transition for me But yeah, the biggest thing would be to make time for each other every day, not to just ignore the relationship and hope that it grows because it's not how it works. Mm-hmm. You need to really be conscious about communicating and spending time together. And um, I don't feel like it's such a huge difference from like a relationship where you're, you're close to each other because you still have to talk about things and you still have to discuss things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. I would say that when you're not together and your twin flame is not in the same area as you in the same place, you have to give you have to give that extra mile for you to be able to communicate properly, to be able to see him. You don't just he's in just in front of you. You have to call him. You have to go on social media or any platform to see him to make a call. And sometimes you take it that as granted. And it, as Christine said, you don't give that much attention or you just, or you forget, you, you, or you forget of it, or you just spend less time together. The most important thing is like having, having a, something like a schedule, I would say, or something more freely just to be able to spend enough time with that to make it, to get the relation to grow. Mm don't get uh, sidetracked by other things and just seeing that person you want to be together every day Mm -hmm. so you just don't forget to focus on the important stuff Mm -hmm. and the important ones like that Mm. beautiful One thing that I want to to highlight a bit at this point is that I feel like you guys really bring bring a very grounded approach to twin flames in the sense of hey it's just like every other relationship because a lot of you know what you mentioned panos that's like and that really applies to the twin flame relationship or any relationship but you you're both sharing a lot of you know just like normal relationship rules and i think that's very very important because a lot of people like on the twin flame journey I've, i've noticed have this belief that like with your twin flame kind of other rules apply and like you can meet them and like two days later ask them if they want to marry you and then two days later you move in together and you you're pregnant and have kids and kind of like jumping over this whole thing that like the twin flame relationship is also like a normal relationship where like the normal relationship rules apply and you're approaching it just like any other relationship where you're building trust and you're communicating and you're just doing the normal things And you can't just treat it like this five-dimensional woo-woo kind of floating around whatever relationship, but you, you're just having a normal human relationship from person to person. Yeah, that's very important because um, a lot of people rush it, as you mentioned. It's like, um, oh yeah, I know we're going to flame, so I must talk to him. I love him on the first day I met him. He's going to be like, perfect, let's get me. <laughs> And it doesn't really work that much. Maybe in rare cases, like we've seen it in Twin Flame Ascension School, but mm. it's not like the norm for most people. It usually takes some time for the other person to like get used to that, really explore for themselves because, okay, you came to the awareness that this person is your Twin Flame, but what about them? Have they explored with you so that they can know if that's what they're looking for? Mm-hmm. And I believe that takes a little bit of time for most of us because we're not... Um, Some of us have blocked to seeing the truth, perhaps, or we're not um, bold enough to ask the right questions <laughs> sometimes because it feels way too forward. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like it's okay to take your time with it. And, um, like, if he has my treatment claim, it's not like he's going anywhere, you know? So, <laughs> I can take my time with it. Mm-hmm. As I have seen, the twin flames to me are like a relationship plus. You 
need to take some of the steps that apply to normal relationships to have made a ground level, set a foundation to build upon what you ever want to build upon in a relationship, that being a more normal or it in flame. I don't believe that you can just rush things. As I say, go to that. Uh, you're with your flames, let's move in together. It doesn't work like that. People need time to adjust to new, uh, new things, new settings and everything. Mm -hmm. So even if you are spiritual, there might be many more differences that you need to resolve before you can just be together. Mm -hmm. And I feel like giving it time and building it slow and steady will help build a more recent relationship. And then you just expand it to being a proper to flame relationship mm -hmm. that you can have like forever after. Mm -hmm. Love that. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm gonna ask you probably the last question so we can start. All right going towards the end. Um, what do you guys feel was the biggest lesson that you have learned from each other since being together? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. I need to think about this. I believe I have the answer. And I would say that the biggest thing is in terms of mistaking action. As a person before I went, it was rather way too passive. I would overthink stuff, don't be, I would be rather idle and not take what, uh, or let, let people just take advantage of me more of the times because I wouldn't be that active. And she said like, no, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, has taught me like to critically take what's mine and don't let people walk over me. Mm -hmm. I would say that's the biggest thing she taught me. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful. I love that. What was it for you, Christine, the biggest thing that you have learned from Thanos? Uh, I feel like um, the biggest thing I've learned from him is about trusting that love exists because I have the tendency to not trust that or sometimes I'm suspicious when he does something nice, but that has nothing to do with him. But it has to do with my previous relationships and some upsets I have been feeling through. But he has shown me that it's normal for a person to love you unconditionally and to just do nice things for you just because there doesn't have to be an ulterior motive. There doesn't have to be like anything more to it other than love. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm just feeling into it. I feel like there's one thing remaining that I, I wanna ask you. Mm -hmm. Go for it. I just don't know what it is yet, <laughs> but it feels weird to close it off. Like it feels like something's still in the room. Just open general question. What, what would your advice be to someone that's on the twin flame journey and wants to come into twin flame union? Do not be afraid to take the lead. <laughs> Even if it seems like your twin flame is doing nothing or being very passive and everything, because I've noticed a lot of times that if not all the time, the person that is aware of the journey is called to take the lead here. Mm -hmm. And while they're healing stuff, they make a bit of a move. That's what they're called to do. But and like I was doing that as well. I was afraid to do that mm -hmm. because he thought I was joking at first. <laughs> but yeah, it's very important to really be confident and if you know the truth in your heart just going for it not hesitating oh well, jeff and chile always say like if you're aware of something you're responsible for it yeah so if you're aware of like the journey and what's going on and the absence and whatnot then you're responsible for them yeah and in our case if i hadn't uh, made the moves that god guided me to make we still wouldn't be together because that was my responsibility. That was what got entrusted to me. Mm -hmm. so that was my step to take. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give someone that wants to come into Twin Flame Union, Panos? I would advise not only taking time, but taking the lessons one, two, or three times to someone that's a bit of foreign to spiritualism. They can get a bit confusing, the meanings uh, that you use. 
are quite different that most people don't understand them when they first read them. So one of the biggest things was like taking the time to properly understand what you're watching or reading to get a feeling for them, uh, the lessons that Jeff of Selly are giving, not just saying, ah, this is that, and just know it by words and not understanding the whole meaning behind those words. Mm -hmm. And that will take time, especially if you're not very well adjusted to spiritualism. Mm -hmm. So that would be my main advice. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. And, you know, regardless of how much you know spirituality, that's kind of applies to everyone because you still have to sit, you know, and really, really understand in your heart what you're reading and to, to really learn whatever lesson you're learning. Really good advice. Okay. So my very it's last... Very he doesn't know yet. Yes. <laughs> So my very last kind of ish question to you is, is there anything you, you feel guided to share at the end, something you want to let the people listening know about the twin film journey, about anything? Yeah, I feel like a message would be to but it's safe to trust your heart. It's safe to trust yourself. Even if sometimes it can feel like you're going crazy with all those things happening, seeing the repeated numbers and all that. Mm. But it's safe to trust uh, that God put you on this journey for a reason and that the result will come. It's not something that you go in gambling like, oh, maybe I get my twin flame or maybe I spend the rest of my life doing the mirror. It's something that works. It's something that has worked for everyone. And honestly, if I did it so can anybody else <laughs> because I'm very slow with those things. But yeah, like trusting and taking things maybe one step at a time and knowing that you will arrive. Mm. Well, it's a journey that so far I believe it's worth every second of time you put into it. Mm. So it's something that it's worth striving for. So as somebody that's not very acquainted to the whole process, I would say that it's definitely worth it. And it's something that many people should ought to give a try in their, their lives to see if they don't. Of course, not everyone, it's not for everyone. Most, and some people would like, not like it. And of course, that's perfectly normal. But I would advise not rejecting it immediately mm. as a foreign concept and giving it time to see how you properly feel about it. I love this piece of advice, both of your pieces of advice. Thank you for sharing everything today. And yeah, thanks for giving all of us an insight into your journey and what it's been like for you and being here with me today. It was a pleasure talking to you. And for our listeners, I want to invite you to head over to TwinFilmsUniverse.com if you want to find the entire teaching behind well, what Christine and Panos talked today and to really, yeah, sign up for Twin Film Ascension School Life Purpose class and our free introduction course that you can also find on the website. So yeah, which all of this gives you the roadmap to healing Twin Film Separation. And other than that, all I have to say is that we will be back next week with our next episode. Thank you all for listening. And I wish many blessings to all of you on your Twin Film journey to Harmonious Union. Mm -hmm.